Hello again and welcome to the Orwell Astronomical Society podcast for December 2016. December sees the shortest day or the winter solstice, to be precise at 10.44am on the 21st. Thereafter the sun starts moving slowly north again and the days start drawing out. The moon starts the month new, waxing or getting larger until the full moon on the 14th and then it wanes again to reach new moon on the 29th. Now to the planets that are visible this month. Mercury is an evening object best seen towards the middle of the month, low in the southwest, immediately after sunset. As always, be very careful if you use binoculars to look for it in case the sun catches you unawares. Venus will be a very obvious object in the evening all month. It will be a very bright object visible just after sunset in the southwest. Mars will also be about in the early evening sky to the south southeast in the constellation Aquarius, just after sunset towards the end of the month. Look out for polar ice caps through a reasonably sized telescope. Jupiter will be a magnificent sight to look at around 6am all month, again obvious bright object quite high in the sky to the south. Binoculars on a tripod will give great views of the four Galilean moons and possibly some stripes on the planet itself. Saturn will just be visible very low in the morning sky around 7am to the southeast towards the end of the month. And of course Uranus in the constellation of Pisces and Neptune in Aquarius are there to look at if you know where. Right, now for something else to look at, meteor showers. December has one of the best meteor showers of the year, the Geminids. And these are their most active on the night of the 13th, 14th of December when you could expect around 100 meteors or shooting stars per hour. On Christmas Eve there is another meteor shower expected, the lesser known Ursids, and these are less active than the Geminids but expect around 10 per hour, and the radiant or apparent origin of the meteor stream is around the plough in the constellation of the Great Bear. Meteors or shooting stars are simply pieces of rock, usually the size of a grain of sand, that race into the Earth's atmosphere and burn up leaving a bright trail, some very fast and others quite slow. To look out for these meteors find a nice dark location, wrap up warm and take a deck chair and settle down and relax and hopefully watch the show. There is a comet 45P Honda Murakos Padusakova and that could become a naked eye sight visible from the UK this month. It could peak at magnitude plus 8 and that would be some 13 degrees west of Venus on Christmas Eve. It might be worth looking at with binoculars. Now on to constellation watching. The prominent constellation of the month is Orion. Most people will recognise this pattern of stars rising in the southeast at the beginning of the month, rising earlier each day. As you look at Orion you will see the bright Betelgeuse in the upper left hand corner. This is a very large red star that is about to go bang, having reached the end of its current stage of life. Now find Orion's belt, the three stars in the middle. Underneath the belt is a stellar birthing ground, the Great Orion Nebula. You will see a fuzzy area and with binoculars you will see some stars which have been newly born with gas still around them. Right, now look to the upper right of Orion. Here is Taurus the Bull. The red star Aldebaran, the Eye of the Bull, is a little further away from Orion, the Pleiades or the Seven Sisters, another of these stellar birthing grounds. You should be able to see around seven big bright blue new stars which are only about a hundred million years old or so, with the gas still around them. And this is another eyesight test. How many stars in the Pleiades can you see? Now look to the upper left of Orion you will see two quite bright stars and these are the twins Castor and Pollux, the brightest stars of Gemini the twins. Incidentally the Geminid meteor shower I mentioned earlier will appear to stream from around this point. Finally look at the bottom left of Orion, better later in the month, and you will see a very bright star, this is Sirius the dog star, and this is the brightest star in the night sky. I hope that this podcast has given you some ideas of what to look out for this month, there is plenty more out there to see, and I recommend that you look on the internet, astronomy magazines, or an astronomy book or sky map to see what else is out there and where to look for it. Another useful tool, as always, is the planisphere, which you can use to find out exactly what is overhead at any time and date of the year. And these are readily available from any good bookshop. That's all for now. 
but listen out next month for January's highlights. Bye for now.